Good evening. The state television company Western Armenia represents the most important events of these days. Today is broadcast. Western Armenia is the first country that recognized the fact of independence of the Republic of Artsakh. The roots of today Armenian Azerbaijani war. Russian peacekeepers ensure security of vehicle traffic via Lachin corridor. The mayor of Barov, no village of Kashatak region, presents details about the situation in the community. Fishing season in Lake Van more abundant than in previous years. On December 1, 1827, the Armenian printing house of Shushi was founded. At the level of international law, in accordance with Article 92 of the Treaty of Service, the relevant borders between Armenia, Azerbaijan and Georgia shall be determined by the direct agreement between the states concerned. In the case that the states concerned fail to reach an agreement, the boundary in question shall be determined by the principal allied powers, who shall also be responsible for its conduct. Also in application of the Treaty of Service, President Woodrow Wilson adopted on November 22, 1920 an award on the delimitation of the western border of Armenia state. The autonomous region of Artsakh began its process of secession from the USSR at the same time as the Soviet Socialist Republics of Armenia and Azerbaijan. On February 26, 1988, a million people marched in Yerevan claiming the attachment of Artsakh to Armenia. The Artsakh parliament voted for union with Armenia on February 20, 1988 and a referendum granted to the people of Artsakh determined the same wish. Armenia declared itself independent on August 23, 1990 without having joined Artsakh. Thus, Artsakh remained on the level of international law attached to Western Armenia recognized in 1920. The question of the eastern border of the Armenian state of Western Armenia provoked the war in Artsakh in 1990, started by Azerbaijan in order to push the borders without any consultation with the Armenian state as far as military forces could allow to have a crossroads with Nakhichevan. The heroic resistance of the Armenian people stopped Azerbaijan's plan to territorially annex Nakhichevan and to implement the Treaty of Batum. The Treaty of Batum was signed by Turkey with the government of the Armenian Republic of Caucasus on June 4, 1918, without taking into account the situation in Zangezur due to the efforts of the General Andrani Kozanyan and Garagin Nashtem. The full article is available on our official website. The roots of the current Azerbaijani-Armenian conflict begins at the end of the World War I with the invasion of Baku by Turkish forces in the Caucasus and the three-day massacres of the Armenian population there. These massacres took place in September 1918 when Bahaeddin Shakir, one of the main authors of genocide against Armenians, was the head of the Baku Police Department. During these massacres, Tashkilati Masusa members and the local Azeris killed about 25,000 Armenians for three days and nights on the pretext of seeking revenge on Armenians for killing Azeris six months ago. It also seems to be fundamentally linked to the comprehensive large-scale genocide program against Armenians in Turkey and abroad. You can read the whole article on our website. The Russian peacekeepers in Artsakh are monitoring the ceasefire and the situation, the Russian Defense Ministry reports. The peacekeepers are ensuring security of vehicle traffic and movement of citizens via the Lachin Corridor. The peacekeepers are ensuring security of civilian vehicle traffic and movement of citizens through the Lachin Corridor, connecting Armenia and Artsakh, the shipment of food and various goods, and the escorting and ensuring security of repair crews, which are fulfilling the tasks of restoring infrastructure facilities, task quoted the ministry. Currently, nine families live in Agavno village community of Artsakh's Kashatak region. The head of Agavno community, Andranik Javushan, told Armen Press about this. Our position of living in a native village and keeping it Armenian has not changed. We will continue to live here. The peacekeepers are doing their job, and we have the right to protect the safety of our families and the village. Our flag continues to wave on the roof of the village hall. We do not want to see another flag there. We are ready to defend our rights, even the cost of our lives. From here, we defend Stepanagert and the rights of the Armenians. We would like clarifications from the relevant bodies. We are told that the village will remain Armenian, but they provide fuel and buses for evacuation, said the head of Agavno community. According to him, the village has been without electricity for about three days. The means of communication in Artsakh do not work, and food and other necessary items are sent to the families living in Agavno by friends and relatives. The fishing season in Lake Van, Western Armenia, is more productive than in previous years. Fishermen fishing for Tarek, which survives only in the soda-rich waters of Lake Van, have reported an increase in fish sales in the city this year. Due to the preventive measures taken by the relative bodies, the number of the fish has increased during this period. Tarek caught in the lake for nine months is a source of livelihood of 50,000 people. 
So she began to develop rapidly in the 1920s and Armenian intelligence began to concentrate in the city. On December 1, 1827, the Swiss evangelical preachers August Dietrich and Felicia Shambaza opened the Sushi Printing House, which was the third in Tres Caucasia after Tbilisi and Echmiadzin. That Sushi came out of national stereotypes and became a cultural center of European significance. 171 books were published here, which testifies about the demand for printing in Sushi. The printing house published the work of Yesai Hassan Jalalian, Bert Broshan Yezian, Terchminyan Manu Gaberian, and others. The fruitful operation of the printing house was interrupted in 1920 by the capture of Sushi by the troops of Musavet, Azerbaijan. They robbed the printing house and set fire the building. During the Soviet era, the printing house was rebuilt by private individuals, and during the liberation of Sushi in 1992, the retreating Azeri army set fire the building again according to typical barbaric style. Now let us represent to your attention a song Nazi Oror. <laughs> You can find the whole version of the song in the official page of Western Armenia TV. This was all for today. Goodbye.